How you view your failures and how you deal with them determines how successful you become in your life. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can reframe how you see your mistakes and use it as a way to gain answers and insight and deep lessons to grow you and progress you forward towards the ideal life and work that you truly want. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Lydia Lee, the reinvention strategist at Screw the Cubicle. And my big passion is helping people just like you to reinvent their work and their lives. And what I do is primarily help people to really shift and repurpose a lot of their skills, their expertise into a better body of work that they can do in an independent career or business. And the outcome is building a life that you truly want and on your own terms that's filled with freedom and autonomy over how you want to use your time and how you want to do your work. So if you are new to this channel, um, please hit the subscribe button because that's the only way for you to be notified that every time I have a brand new weekly video, which comes out on this channel every Wednesday-ish, sometimes it's on a Wednesday, usually on a Wednesday, sometimes on a Tuesday or Thursday, depending on the week. But my promise to you is one video a week. So uh, here's where you can get your resources uh, to really help you uh, to design a business and a career that helps support the lifestyle that you want. Today's video topic really was born from when I was um, constructing, you know, the outline for my first uh, webinar training this year called 2020 Vision, a goal setting and vision mapping workshop that I just ran last week. So if you are watching this on a later date or today, uh, don't worry on the link below this video and on a card appearing on the top, uh, there will be a link for you to register for free and be able to view the replay, which has a ton of really valuable information and um, a very, very collaborative and hands-on workshop that allows you to create the right goals that you want for 2020, uh, motivate it right by the right purposes and your deep why, and uh, the ability for you to actually understand what it takes for you to create the best habits and practices to achieve those goals effectively beyond just the January setting intentions and resolution month of a brand new decade. So I hope you join me there. And again, you can find the link below this video on or on one of the cards. Now, today's video uh, is about looking at your past mistakes or failures, because one of the big things that I did in that webinar is to help people start to reflect back and take stock of what the hell happened in our lives in the past 12 months. Now, sometimes life can feel like a blur, especially when you have a busy schedule, you sort of feel like you're just taking all the boxes, but you haven't really felt present in your own life. And if you felt that way, don't worry. Lots of us do in this sort of fast speed, doing more kind of lifestyle that we're sort of have adapted to, that we're kind of trying to unhinge ourselves from these days. I know as a type A achiever and a perfectionist and someone who is a go-getter, even though I am working for myself and I have full autonomy over my time, it can be very easy to slip into just feeling busy and feeling, thinking that's really productive and not taking that necessary pause to really think about whether or not everything that we're doing is really leading us to a life experience that we really want. So that deep pause is something I have to do every single year as well. Now in that reflection exercise, some of the big questions I really ask people is what have you really learned? The deep lessons that keep repeating themselves or quote unquote mistakes and failures that keep appearing year after year. And what are those signs? What are those failures trying to tell you? What are the missing gaps of information or skill or a mindset shift that actually is preventing you from having that do over every single year or going after those big goals that you set for yourself every single year? Now, it's a no shame zone here, so there's nothing to feel regretful or shameful about, but we can really reframe, right, how we see our mistakes by actually really learning from them, seeing what they're really telling us in what we truly desire, what's missing for us in our lives, what boundaries uh, are not being had in our lives that we have to actually put in place. Uh, and what are some of the things that are important to us that maybe we haven't found time for or thought we were worthy of, but are actually really valuable for us. And that's kind of why I like a fresh start to a new year is to really 
think about some of these things so that we can have this fresh start uh, and make sure that our, our lives are transformed for the next 12 months, uh, upcoming 12 months for ourselves and make the right uh, focus uh, and be present to those needs that we have in the life and the work that we really truly desire. So there are really a lot of answers uh, in our challenges. So whatever challenges you've um, gone through. So for me, I'll share it right now. Um, and please feel free to share under the comments as well for yourself so we can know that we're not alone <laughs> in dealing with some of these obstacles and challenges. Um, one of my personal challenges that I faced last year, which I wrote in length about uh, at my 2019 recap blog, is that I suffered from an immense depression uh, and chronic anxiety, which I've had in my bloodline for many years that come from my mother's side. I love you, mom, if you're watching this, but we do have a very high-strung personality type on my mother's side of the family. And I've also tend to have taken a bit of that, that sort of pressure and the weight of the world on my shoulders and feeling like I can't screw it up in order for me to be, be successful. So I've been learning a lot about letting go of perfectionism and letting go of, of just you know, and actually just embracing being good enough um, every time I release anything new, right? Or do something new with my life without judgment. So one of my personal challenges has been dealing with anxiety and depression. And you, I could totally just like, bleh, F you depression for screwing up my first three months of 2019. But in hindsight, you know, a lot of what I've learned through uh, going through that depression was how important uh, self-care is in my life and not just a buzzword, but what it actually meant for me was a lot more around the sort of critical mind that I have in my head, the biggest judge of all inner critic that I have that makes life more miserable for me than it should be. Uh, and those were the sort of inner demons that I have to face, which allowed me to see that self-care wasn't just bubble baths and taking a break at times. It was changing the way that I was talking to myself, ch changing the kind of language that I use for myself to feel successful in my life and in my business. And more importantly, um, all the things that I thought were my sort of gifts, which were things like multitasking and being able to do lots of things in a 24 hour span of time, wasn't actually really healthy for me. I was sort of proud about that for many years that I could do five big things in a, in a working day, but that actually contributed to my feelings of burnout and my feelings of just, um, you know, feeling depleted and de-energized uh, at, at the end of the last year before that in 2018, right? Which was what birthed the entire depression and chronic anxiety uh, signs to begin with. And so those answers for me was that the way that I need to structure how I want to do life differently in my work and in my personal life this year is to create a lot of space in my calendar to actually do nothing, right? And that's my idea of self-care, that actually spaciousness uh, is the real freedom. You know, not trying to put more things in my to-do list just because I can, but actually to enjoy what I've built, you know, enjoy what I've, what my whole intention was to be a business owner, right? Which was to create time and space for friends and family, but also for myself. So that allowed me to do something very tangible this year, which is to actually have great boundaries to say no to a lot of projects that I was about to do and actually really pick, cherry pick the right ones that suit the kind of theme that I want to represent this year for my life and my work and stick to those things and do those things, those small, tiny things really well in order for me to feel right in my work and in my business. So what are some of your personal challenges that you've experienced over and over again in the last year or maybe repeatedly every single year? What do you think uh, is trying to tell you? What, what, what sort of growth uh, gaps or might be available for you to step into in the new year uh, that could actually change the course of everything for you this year. And I think if you take that time to listen to those answers, that can help you to formulate some real tangible steps and systems or practices and habits that can allow you to be that different person that you need to become this year. And the note that I want to give you here too is that when we look at mistakes, a lot of times we look at um, feeling that we're not capable to do something better. Because a lot of what we see out there, again, in the internet world, is everybody's successes without the warts and the wrinkles. You see the success stories over and over again. Uh, and I hope that anyway, from what I share in, the, in this channel, also shares a lot of the back story of things that actually all of us are human, all of us make mistakes, and all of us uh, fuck up sometimes. And that's 
all right. Because the more you fail, the more you are actually on the right track to your success. Nobody I know, and I'm sure you've read that somewhere before, that nobody that's ever been successful has never failed more than they have actually won. So in summary, failure really builds your sense of resilience. And resilience was one of the biggest lessons I've learned in 2019 that is the biggest part uh, that helps me to be sustainable in all the things that I want to achieve in my life and my work. Because when we're able to build resilience, that, help, that helps us to keep persistence towards some of the big goals that we have in our life. And so our ability to really bounce back from defeat is really crucial to our uh, success and failure really gives us this opportunity to build that resilience. So embrace that and take that pause instead of beating yourself up and ju judging yourself to say, oh, that's interesting. I kind of went a route. I tried that route. I probably would have tried it again because that felt right for me at the moment. I trusted my gut. And this is just opening up a new door of new answers. You haven't gone the wrong way. You've actually just deepened your understanding of your own problem and you're actually building more room for clarity that can actually get you to the right answers uh, in due time if you persist towards that path. So the gift of your failures and your mistakes is that it's going to force you to rethink, reconsider, and maybe restructure your resources, right? That may be available to you to do something better. It's really a better way to get to your goal. That's how you can really look at it. Because in every time that we have, we make a mistake or we feel like that we failed at something or truly have failed at something, we have new data. We have new evidence of what better solutions or resources or skills that we need to actually acquire in order for us to achieve our goals more effectively and more meaningfully. So embrace that every failure, there are insights and deep lessons learned. If you choose to see them that way, you will never regret any of your failures because you're going to be growing yourself as a person and you'll be growing your skill sets to be able to uh, build your resilience and build your strong lion heartedness of your person to be able to actually take on new challenges um, and bigger goals in the near future. So I would love to hear from you. What are, what's, what's one of the biggest things that you've learned from reflecting on your year in 2019? What particular failure kind of keeps you up at night a little bit? And how would you love to reframe that as a lesson learned to grow you as a person and progress you forward towards a fresh vision for your life in 2020? Please share with me below this video. I would love to hear it. Um, and I hope that this video resonated with you. Thank you again for joining me for this week's video. We have a new video coming up every single week and your feedback is always appreciated from me. I take on all your questions um, to heart and I create videos according to your questions. So here's your opportunity to leave me a comment on what would you love for me to create a video, um, a, a topic video for you. And maybe I'll dedicate the next video to you. So please share that with me. Uh, and I hope you got something uh, powerful out of this video and share with somebody uh, that you may know that could really benefit from watching this as well. Thank you for joining me for this week's video of Screw the Cubicle TV. I will see you next week. Ready to work for yourself but have no idea where to begin? I'll show you how. Learn how to create a self-employment plan with work you can love with the Work Reinvented course. It's time to stop wondering if there's a bigger, more meaningful way to enjoy your life and work. There is.